Today we're talking about end times deceptions. Man, there's so many. So much craziness going on in these end times, folks. There's twisted scripture left and right. You got to be careful who you're listening to out there. Just because somebody comes in the name of the Lord does not mean they work for Him. There's a lot of false Christ, false apostles, false teachers. There's just a lot of things that are false out there. There's going to be lying wonders and great signs. There's going to be a lot of craziness in these end times. We're already starting to see some of it popping off. But we're going to get into the Word this morning. Maybe we'll get some truth that helps us not to be some of those folks that are deceived. Because the devil's trying to trick all of us. That's one of his main things. He's a deceiver. He doesn't just come out right and tell you, hey, what I'm telling you is a lie. He's trying to trick you. And he kind of sprinkles it with a little bit of truth. He uses God's Word at His disposal and twists it. Let's look at Revelation 12, verse 9. So the great dragon, or Satan, was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So he's got some helpers, folks. And in another place, it says he, he drew a third of the stars, or a third of the angels, with him. A third of the angels? Man, he was able to deceive a third of the angels in heaven? Man, he must be good at deceiving, folks. He was able to trick them from sticking with God to, to following Him. And he doesn't do it just outright. He does it so subtly. He does it with such great deception. So we have to be on constant alert, folks. We have to be on guard and we have to listen to the Holy Spirit who warns us. He reveals to us what is right and what is wrong. Amen. And sometimes our emotions disagree with what God says. And we cannot listen to our emotions. You ever heard that old saying, follow your heart? No. <laughs> Do not. The Bible says something different. Yeah. The heart is deceptive. Who can know it? It is wicked, folks. Don't follow your heart. Follow the Word, and you will not go astray. And follow the correct teaching of the Word. Amen? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 11, 13-15 For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder... For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So that means that the devil not only has demons doing his, their thing, but he's also got people too. It says he's got ministers working for Him. And they're deceiving folks. And if you just listen to some of the churches that are out there today, there is some craziness being taught. Just outright weirdness in every which way. We'll talk about a few things today. Some things to stay away from. Nevertheless, let's keep going here. Titus 1.10 for there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. Now that's talking about uh, Jewish folks trying to deceive in, their, in that way. But nevertheless, there's deceivers. So we already know there's deceivers. There's people out there trying to trick us. So that means we need to be aware. Amen? Be aware. Whenever I first came to Christ, I just listened to everything. And I didn't know any different. I didn't know what was right. I, I read any scripture that was out. I read. I listened to any talker, any pastor, and I just believed everything they said because I didn't know any different. I didn't have a chance to understand and read the Bible for myself. But now that I have read the Bible, 
I know what is right and I know what's wrong. And I know how to discern between the two. And I don't just listen to anybody anymore. And I would encourage you, check your resources, folks. Check out the truth for yourself. If you get pinged in the Spirit and something don't sound right, check it with the Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Be Bereans. <laughs> Be those who look into the Scripture dil diligently, trying to find out what is right. Don't just accept everything you've always been taught because something might not be right. You know, it, as, as much as I try my best to get what is right, even I can be fallible too. Right? Anybody, it's, it's possible. So, even if I say something that doesn't sit right, read the Word for yourself, folks. That's what you are called to do. Some people say, rely on what your pastor tells you. Just listen to everything they say. But no, the devil can use anybody and he can deceive anybody. I'm not saying that he's deceiving me. But I might be wrong in one or two things. You never know. God bless you. But check the Word for yourself. And as just a rule of thumb, that just should be what you should do with everybody. Amen. Everybody across the board. There's certain people we like listening to, but there might be some things they say that's wrong. That's why it's up to each and every single one of us to be diligent students of the Word. Amen. we got to pick up the Bible for ourselves, folks. That is the best checklist. Read it for yourself and let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. Amen? Amen. I do my best. And maybe I am right most of the time, God willing. That's what I pray for every time. But there might be one thing I might even misspeak and say wrongly. And it might confuse you. So read the Word for yourself, folks. And that will help us to not be deceived. Amen? Because Amen. that's... The devil's trying to do that. So we need to be aware of that. Alright? 2 John 1.7 For many deceivers have gone out into the world. How many? Many. many. Have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, believe it or not, uh, most of us believe that there's there's an antichrist. There is a, a main antichrist, but there are also many antichrists. All right, there are many deceivers. Listen to this encouragement, Hosea four six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge. I will also I also will reject you from being priests for me. Now he's talking about a specific person. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will forget your children. Now he's talking to a specific purpose, but nevertheless, I believe he speaks to all of us in this statement. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Yep. If you don't study the word for yourself, you will perish. You won't know what to follow. You'll just follow every wind of doctrine that comes your way. And in that, the devil can deceive you. If we're that gullible, that ignorant of the truth, he can deceive us. That's why we have to study ourselves approved. Amen? Amen. We have to study ourselves approved. Get your Bibles and read every day. Mm -hmm. Every day, I've said this before, we don't really miss meals. Do we? When it comes to natural food, we make sure we eat, don't we? Sometimes two or three meals a day with snacks in between, right? Am I right? Right. If we if we miss a meal, who we can sure feel it, don't we? Well, guess what? Your spirit needs nourishment too. You can't afford to go one two days without reading the word, especially in these times that we're living in. You can't afford to miss reading the word. And I know sometimes it's hard to pick up because you got all these other things you would rather do. But if you can sit and watch a show for an hour, you can sit and watch a, a movie for two hours even. So these movies are getting longer and longer nowadays. If you can sit and watch that much of something, you can sit and read, folks. Oh, yeah. I know it might be hard at first, but if you make it a daily practice, oh, i got to get my word in. That's why they call it the daily bread. Amen. you got to have daily bread. His Word Amen. is that daily bread. It will help protect you from being deceived. But you got to be in the Word. Don't be one that is destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
right? Make sure you're students of the Word. Because there are people who are out there who are twisting Scripture. Where do they get that from? They get it from the devil. Because that's what he started out doing, twisting things. 1 Timothy 4.1 But the Spirit explicitly says that in latter times, or these end times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Where is this falsehood coming from? It's coming from demons. It's coming from the devil. It, you know, sometimes we think this person doesn't know what they're talking about. Well, maybe it's the devil trying to get them to say something. Maybe it's the devil trying to use man to deceive you. So we've got to be careful, folks. We've got to be careful. Not everybody you turn on TBN has everything that's right, folks. Yeah. There was, I started out watching TBN, but I guarantee you there's a lot of stuff in there that ain't good. Oh, yeah. I've heard some of y'all say, I turn on TBN and I like it, I like it. Ooh, ooh. You got to study the Word, folks, because some of the things they're teaching, it might come in subtly, but it ain't good. Right. Some of the things I've heard on TBN is that you can become gods. <laughs> Have you ever heard that on there yet? Oh, yeah. It's on there. There's a lot of them that believe that. Oh, yeah. You can become a god? No. That's what the devil tried tricking Eve with in the very beginning. That you can become like God. No, you can't. There's only one God and you ain't it. And you ain't ever going to be it. Amen. That's one of the end times deception. And it's been here forever. As good as you ever will be, you will never be a God, folks. You're just lucky to be in the family and adopted in at that. Alright? You ain't ever going to be a God. And that's good. I only, I, there are only one God and we worship Him. Amen? Amen? But when you start to think that you can become a God, that means you can become a God of yourself and you can do whatever you want. And that's what the devil wants you to do. Whatever you want. Whatever your heart tells you. Whatever your feelings are. What a deception. Amen. We can't follow that. Even some things we may think are right. If it goes against God's Word, it is wrong, folks. Point blank. Don't try to wiggle around it. Don't try to make exceptions to the rule. Don't try to justify it. If God says it's wrong, it's just wrong. Amen. And I'm okay with that. And you need to be too. Mm -hmm. It's okay to admit you're wrong. Yep. Let's say you've always thought something or somebody's always taught you a certain thing. If it goes against God's Word, it is just wrong. Amen. Second Timothy 4, 3 and verse 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires or what their heart tells them or what their feelings and emotions say, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Heap up. That means there's several out there that are wrong. But if you, if you want to try to justify something, you don't have to look long. There's always going to be somebody out there that agrees with you. But that's not who we need to look for. We need to look for teachers that are not scared to try to tell you what's true. Amen? Even if it offends my sensibilities. Even if it hurts my feelings sometimes. I need, what, I need that. I need to be corrected. Amen? I need to be rebuked. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to fables. They will believe things that are fake. They will believe things that are false. Isn't that sad? There's people out there that tell you, you, if you're a man, you can become a woman. Or if you're a woman, you can become a man. Talk about a fable, folks. This ain't reality. If I really wish hard enough and I really pray hard enough, God, turn me into a unicorn. Hey, everybody accept that I'm a unicorn right now. Don't you see my horn? No, it ain't there, folks. That's a fable. We, we tell fables to our kids. I tell stories to my kids. They like stories. I make up stuff, right? And they, they're entertained. But it's not reality. Right. What's reality is God made a man a man and a woman a woman. Amen. And whatever you were born as, that's what God wanted you to be. And you need to be okay with that. Amen? Amen. God knows what He's doing. And yeah, you may have certain feelings about the opposite sex and you may feel a certain way, 
But nevertheless, if it goes against what God says, you need to fight against it. And that doesn't matter. That's across the board. Maybe I desire, I want to be a drunk. Maybe I want to get drunk every day. And that's how I feel. And, and, I'm, and y'all need to be okay with that. Y'all need to accept that. Well, no. If it goes against God, God's Word, then we need to all be against that. And not accepting of anything that is sinful. But yet, there are people out there teaching fables and trying to get people to believe things that are fake. And they've departed from the faith. They've believed the deception. They've allowed their emotions. They have allowed their heart to deceive them. But God's Word is clear. And we have to believe what God says if we want to be in right standing with Him. And it might be hard at first. And I'm not going to downplay that you might have to really go through some hard stuff in your mind. Because this world is trying to teach you and train you that all those things are okay. And that everybody else is wrong that disagrees with you. No. If it goes contrary to God's Word, then I'm the one that's wrong. Right? And we have to be accepting of that. And He knows what's best for us. You know there's a lot of people out there who have got that corrective surgery that regret it. I've heard of testimonies of people and people who even come to Christ and say, Jesus, I was wrong. And they got the sex change. And they wish they wouldn't have. But so long, so many people agreed with them and said, it's okay, you're right. And so they needed people in their life to tell them, no, that is wrong. And let every man be a liar and God be true. Amen. Amen. And that that includes yourself if you're in there too. And you believe something that's wrong, let God be true. Don't believe the fable. And don't let people turn you to believe fables. Even if it's politically correct. No, you stand up for what's true. Amen? Amen? And let the chips fall where they may. It might offend people, it might make them mad, but you try to tell them the truth in love. God gives us the truth to protect us. Amen? 1 Timothy 4.2 But they're speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Don't let your conscience be seared, folks. Don't stifle the Holy Spirit's conviction. If He's trying to tell you something is wrong, don't believe the lie. Don't believe the deception. But here's another one, folks. We already know that in these end times people are twisting Scripture. There's also going to be people who claim to be Christ. They're going to claim to be Jesus. And I believe it's going to ramp up more, but they're already here. They're already here. We hear about them all the time. You do a quick YouTube search of people who claim to be Jesus, and they pop up everywhere. There was one guy in Houston already. He's already long since been dead. But guess what he got his followers to believe? He claimed to be the Antichrist, but he said it was a good thing. He got his followers to put 666 on them. And the Bible tells you, don't accept that. But he got them to do it. And he claimed to have over a million followers. So that means there's a lot of people getting deceived out there. There's a lot of people not reading their word. How can a million people get so deceived when the Bible tells you explicitly don't receive that number on you? And then they go out and get it because they're not reading their Word. we got to make sure we're reading that Word. But listen, Matthew 24, 4-5. through And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in My name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. They're out there, folks. And there's still some who are still alive telling people that they are Jesus. And they got many followers. If somebody popped up on the scene and said, I'm Jesus, I'm the second coming. I came back, I'm here for you. But it's a little different than what you read in the Bible. No, I'm here, I'm here to be with you. And he's performing these miracles and he's doing all this stuff. And it seems confusing and you're like, maybe I did get it wrong. Or maybe those pastors that I heard read the Word, maybe they were wrong. Maybe the Bible was wrong. Maybe people, you, And you start to justify all this stuff in your mind because you're seeing miracles. Don't believe it, folks. That's not Jesus. Amen? Amen. 
Jesus tells you, and He warns you right here, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in My name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. My prayer is none of you will get deceived. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because you're going to be reading your Word, aren't you? Amen. You're going to be listening to the Holy Spirit's conviction, aren't you? Yep. 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. By which we know that it is the last hour. We know it's the end times, folks. It was the end times way back then. Yeah. How much end times is it now? I mean, we're down to the wire, folks. It's down to the wire. Jesus, I pray you're coming soon. Amen. Amen. But there's going to be false Christs, and we're already seeing them, just like He said. Then also there's going to be lying wonders. Matthew 24, verse 24. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. If possible, even the elect. That scared me the first time I read that. That scared me. If it is even possible, maybe some of the elect can get deceived too. I don't want to be deceived on anything. And I don't want a, a, some kind of sign or wonder or miracle performed that deceives me into following something that is false. Because yes, God does all of it. God does signs and wonders and miracles and He does all that stuff. But the devil uses that kind of stuff too to deceive. Doesn't he? Now we see kind of a picture of the, the demonic versus God's powers. When we see in the Old Testament when Pharaoh caused his magicians to turn their staffs into snakes. Well, guess what? Moses did too. Moses turned his staff into a snake as well. And guess what his staff did? Ate theirs. <laughs> that just shows you God's power is better than the devil's. Yeah, God God has allowed the devil to use some, some power. All right? But God's power is always greater. Amen? But don't be deceived just because it might be a miracle or, or it might seem like one. Or, or maybe your eyes have deceived you. There's a lot of modern technology out there that makes things confusing for us. They have stuff that they can put up in the sky that might look like Jesus, but it might be just technology. They have things called Project Blue Beam and they have... Drones, and I, we just saw this not long ago. They did a fireworks display with drones and made pictures up in the sky. Did anybody see that? They can do all kinds of stuff. And just because you see it with your eyes or just because you hear it with your ears, don't believe everything, folks. Amen. Because there is a lot of deception going on right now. A lot. And just because you hear it on the news, don't believe it. Okay, because they're trying to deceive you there too. I just watched another video of all these different news stations saying the exact same word for word, scripted across the board. Every single news station reading the same script. Now that right there could scare you. Especially if you don't miss the news. I don't miss the news. I live, And if you believe what your newscaster is telling you, he could tell you, he could, spin it, he could spin the truth to you any number of ways. Yep. And that's what you'll believe. No, you check it with the Word of God. That's right. Amen? If it don't sound right, oh, I don't know about that. That don't sound right. Maybe God's trying to clue you in on some deception. Yep. I saw another video of these, this newscaster standing out in this supposed storm. And he was, oh, the wind was blowing on him. And he was, oh, man, it's bad out here. And then it cuts and shows you another image of it. And he's standing next to a green screen. And they're blowing a fan on him. And it looks like the wind's real blowing. He's acting a certain way. It's deception. Yeah. Trying to make you believe one thing. Don't believe everything you hear. Be skeptical. All right? You don't have to be skeptical of every single thing. But it's good to have a healthy skepticism about some things. Don't just take every everybody's word for it. Because... 
unfortunately, some people just don't know what they're saying. And then you got people actually trying to deceive you. <laughs> it's everywhere, and it's scary. But I don't want to be one of those people that are deceived. All right, let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12. The coming of the lawless one, or the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth. That's one thing we got to do, folks. Make sure you receive that love of the truth, that you love God's Word. You love it, and you don't pick and choose which parts you like. You take everything and you like it all. Even if it offends some sensibilities you got. Even if it upsets you in some kind of way. You like it all. Because then you won't be deceived. It says they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. That's how we get saved, folks. Is that truth of His Word. It's through Jesus. Amen? And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion or allow that delusion to overtake them, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See, that's the thing. And that's what it boils down to. Some folks would rather unrighteousness. They would rather believe the lie because it goes along with what they want to do. They would rather believe that deception over what God is telling them is true because they want to keep sinning. And the truth is contrary to sinning. Every form, folks. <laughs> Every form. There's no sin God says, oh yeah, you can just keep doing that. And there's no special understandings. We may have all said that one time. Me and God have an understanding. <laughs> we have a special connection, me and God. I'm one of His favorites, you see. I'm one of His elect. He lets me get by and do certain things that He doesn't let just everybody, but I'm allowed to. Because we have that understanding. It don't work that way, folks. You're not as special as you think you are. <laughs> if you're thinking that. You're special to Him, but not enough to allow you to keep sinning in any kind of way you want to. Alright? You have to agree with the Word of God and let the chips fall where they may. Even if that upsets you, offends you, or whatever, say, whew, there's many times, even still to this day, that I read certain things in the Bible and I'm like, ooh, that's hard. That's tough. But He's checking me all the time. Correcting me. Rebuking me. And I have to be accepting of it. And I have to make myself get in line. I have to say, I can't justify that. Are there still some things I still struggle with? Of course. And you will struggle with stuff till the day you die. It's hard sometimes, but we need to try our best. Amen? you got to try your best. I can't say I won't ever sin anymore. I can't. I can't say I won't ever sin, but I'm going to try my best not to. I can't say I'm perfect right now, but I can tell you I'm going to strive to be. And somewhere in those two statements is where we find our Christian walk. And it's in that doing and trying your best that you do. Sometimes I say, God, I'm trying my best. And then I'll, I'll be corrected and say, no, you want to try your best. But you're not trying your best. Because if you were trying, you would be doing your best. Oh, <clears throat> you're right. <laughs> right. Sometimes we want to believe better for ourselves. I want to believe I'm doing my best, you know. I'm trying my best. And then I'm corrected by the Holy Spirit. He yeah. says, no, you're not. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard, you know. Yeah. Sometimes right. you, 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 when you look at yourself in the mirror, it's hard to see that reflection that's looking back. Because oh, yeah. in the actuality of it, are you really? Yeah. Are you really trying your best? Because yeah. if you were really trying, you would be doing it. Amen. Amen. And 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 that's that's the thing, folks. We really got to put it in put in some effort for the Lord. We got to try harder and do better and not deceive ourselves. That's another one of these end times deceptions. 
deceiving our own selves. James 1.22 But be doers of the Word and not hearers only. Don't come to church on Sunday and just hear a good message and hear all of God's Word and then go home and do whatever you want. Amen. You know what's happening? You're deceiving yourself thinking you're doing something good. Because you're not. You would have been better staying home. Because now you didn't hear what God told you to do. Yep. Now you're being directly disobedient to God's Word. Because you heard it and you're choosing not to do it. Right. And you've deceived yourself. That's one of the big end times deceptions that the devil has deceived us. Come to church, hear a feel-good message, then go home and live however you want. No, folks, that's not the reality of things. You've believed a fable. You've believed a big, tall tale the devil has sold you. He's like one of those old-time people that used to travel in carts. Uh, what do they call them? Um, it was a... They would say snake oil. Snake oil salesman. That's right, Cody. Thank you. I wanted to say snake salesman. And I was like, no, it's an oil salesman. No, it's a snake oil salesman. They would sell you a bit of goods. They say, man, this is a cure all. You take this, you buy this, give me twenty dollars, and this right here will fix everything you got. You got hearing problems? It'll fix it. Oh, you got a bad ticker? Here, that'll fix that. And it just cured everything. You got bad teeth? That'll cure it. And it sounds good, man. I mean, shoot, I want a cure-all. You know, you ain't got to have... you got a big medicine cabinet. It's got 20 different things on one row and 20 different on the next. And you can't ever find exactly what you need. Yeah. But if you just had one thing that could cure it all, shoot, man, give me that, you know? Yeah. But he sold you a bill of goods. He sold you something that was false. I don't want to be deceived. I want to believe what is true. Amen? But there's people out there trying to tell you things that are good are really bad. Things that are bad are really good. Yep. When the Bible tells us about that, Isaiah 5.20, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. They're trying to tell you what you want to hear, folks. They're trying to tell you what the devil's wanting them to tell you to deceive you. We got to be careful. We got to be watchful. Many places in the Bible tells us to be watchful. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. On alert. Be ready. Be instant. Be. It tells us to be awake, folks. Don't just don't just be asleep to things. Pay attention. If something don't sound right, maybe it isn't right. And if it goes in the face of God's Word, it definitely is not right. And it doesn't matter how they spin it. They can sure spin a good message. Some people like to lie about that stuff of homosexuality and say it's okay. Some people like to lie about that stuff about abortion and say it's alright. It ain't, folks. And as a matter of fact, if there's any sin that you're trying to allow or if they're trying to justify, it's not okay. Across the board, God corrects. Corrects us in the Word. He tells us what's right, and He tells us what's wrong, and we don't have to be confused. Just this other day, I heard somebody say something. They said, there's another earth out there. It can sustain life. It's another earth. And at first, you know, that makes you think, wow, you know. And I even saw a pastor say, wow, that's interesting. I was like, what are you, what are you saying? Don't you understand what they're trying to do? They're trying to say that this planet that we're living on isn't as fine-tuned as you thought. That in evolution, there is another place that could, can sustain human life. No. This is the place God has chosen this is the place. And they look through a telescope and they can just see just a little small image and say, yep, that looks like earth. And it can sustain human life. You don't know. You can't tell. You haven't been there. You haven't seen the gravity. You haven't, seen, you haven't breathed its oxygen. You don't know what the plant life is like. You don't know anything. You just see from a telescope and you've already made an assumption. 
And if you out there say, oh, well, science has discovered it, so we must believe it. Well, maybe evolution is right. And then you start believing that, and then there's only one more step. Well, maybe God isn't real. Maybe everything I've always thought, every, everything I've always been taught is wrong. And the devil got you with a little science. You know, science is good and all, but if you stop believing in Jesus because of it, your science ain't right. Because God made science. God created everything. And you can see God in everything. You can see His handiwork right down to even the, our brains and our DNA. You can see a fine-tuned Creator. He created you in such a unique way. You can see His hand in everything. But if you ever start to try to push God aside and say, oh, well, this is right, and all these scientists say it's right. See, sometimes we think we're so stupid. And these scientists are so smart, they got to be right. You know, they got to be. Because they got all these PhDs and doctorates and all that. And I didn't ever go to college, and that, so they must be right, you know. <laughs> well, not everybody who says something that's smart is smart, folks. Because they got their own agendas. You know, science has always said something one time, and then later on, they end up saying, oh, we were wrong way back then, you know. We, science can change. But guess what doesn't ever change? God. God's Word. Stick with that, and you won't be deceived, folks. You know, another end times deception is people say there's many paths to God. Many religions, many ways. And on the onset, we want that. We want that to be true because our heart breaks for thinking that people are going to go to hell in some other religion and across the world. We think, man, I want them in heaven, you know, because we don't want to think of anybody's going to suffer. And you come from a place of, of, you know, with good intentions. But not all intentions are right. Just because it sounds good doesn't mean it's right. There is only one way, and that is through Jesus Christ. There is only one way to make it to heaven to the Father. And that is through Jesus Christ. There is only one name. And that is the name of Jesus. Amen. See, the devil's cool with all the other religions. He's cool with them. Don't mess with them. You know why? Because he knows they're all deceptions. He knows they're all ways leading away from God. And there's only one path that's a narrow path that leads to God. And his name is Jesus. Broad is the way to destruction. There's many religions in the world. Many false ways to make it to heaven. You can't make it any other way. Not your good merits. Not some Buddha. Not some Allah. Not anything else but Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why it's crucial for us to spread that name. That's why it's crucial for us to stand up for the truth. And especially these end times because these people need it, folks. One last one, deception. This might freak you out a little bit. Is anybody hearing a lot about aliens lately? It's everywhere. Even the government's declassifying stuff about seeing aliens and all kinds of stuff. And it's getting kind of weird, folks. About aliens. For a long time now, God helped me in on with some insight. What's, what's one way that you know that people could tell you to explain away the rapture? What's, what's one thing? The only thing that comes to my mind is an, a mass alien abduction. Why do you think they're putting that out in the news and, and all, all these movies about aliens and stuff? Because they want our minds to be trained to think, oh wow, that was aliens that abducted us. What if on your news and you, you turn it on the net channel... And somehow it says, all these mass alien abductions just took place all across the world and everybody from every walk of life has been alien abducted. I would be thinking, oh Lord, did I just miss the rapture? <laughs> oh no. But that's the thing. That's how they're going to explain it away. Because there's going to come a rapture. So the devil's putting his pieces into place, getting things ready to explain it. Because once that rapture takes place, now he can come on the scene. Yes. Now he can do his time. And it's a short time. But he's got a time to do his thing. There's going to be many people deceived in that time. And my prayer and hope is that you don't miss the rapture. Amen. 
But if for somehow you do, and you wake up one day and you turn on the news and they say, oh, there's been a mass abduction and all these people, and y'all try to come to church Sunday, and most of us are gone. <laughs> you know you've missed the rapture. Amen. And it's time to really get right with the Lord. Oh, yeah. Amen. Not just play. Not deceive yourself no more, but really get right. Really make Him your Lord now. Amen. 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 And that's the key. That's the kicker is when you really make Jesus your Lord, you obey Him. You want the truth. Amen? You love the truth. You won't be deceived. He's going to help you to not be deceived, folks. But you got to believe the Word of God. Over your opinions, over your traditions, over your feelings, over your heart, over the popular or majority rule, over the political correctness, you got to believe the Word of God. And you believe Him, and you follow Him, and He will never lead you astray. He will show you what's true. And that's so beautiful to me, that I don't have to get deceived. Amen? That I can look at something and say, ooh, that ain't right. You know why? Because I've been in my Word. I've studied to show myself a fruit. Amen? And by that, that's our course corrector. That's the one that shows us and highlights what's true and what's false. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Amen? But don't push your resource to the side. Don't let that Bible collect dust. You open that thing. And even if it's not an actual Bible, you have apps or people that use phones or computers. You find a way to get the Word in. Amen? You find a way. Because it will show you what's true. It's tough being in these end times, but God's called us for such time as this. I thanked Him for that the other day. Thank you, Lord, that you wanted me to exist in these end times. In this crazy turmoil, you wanted me to be here. Me and maybe he's using you to be this light that needs to be here in this time, in this dark time. And maybe he's put us here to be some of the ones to spread the truth in despite of the deception that's here, in despite of the people who are twisting God's word, in despite of the false Christ and the false teachers, in despite of what, what may be said on the news, despite it all. We can be the ones that God reveals the truth and then we in turn reveal it to others and maybe we'll wake somebody else up who's in darkness. And they won't believe the lie anymore, but they'll believe God's word and believe his truth. And now they're walking with us. Amen. Brother, I have something. As you, as, since your message was against deception, it reminds me the Lord brought some to my uh, remembrance. I was in a popular bookstore. It's Barnes & Noble. Many of y'all know of that. I was in their uh, religious section. I guess I won't say Christian, you know, but where they have the Bibles and all. And I saw a book. It was like front and face. And uh, the title of it was Your Weapon Again in Spiritual Warfare, the Holy Rosary. And they had a picture of the rosary on the front. And I, I know that's Catholicism, but it grieved my spirit because my mind went to Jesus in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, he didn't have a rosary, but what did he have? You want to know what your weapon is? Amen. Spiritual warfare? It's this right here, the Word. That's so right. David writes, Lord, your Word I've hidden in my heart Amen. that I might not sin against you. That's right. So being familiar with His voice, that's right. His Word, that's Amen. what Jesus used against Satan was the Word. That's right. Amen. Amen. And it was effective, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. The devil fled after that. <laughs> but then in one place it says he, he fled for an opportune time. <laughs> that means he's looking for his opportunity. Yeah. That was for us, too. But that's how you just keep fighting him back with that's that right. sword. Every time. Oh, you want to go try to deceive him? Nope, nope. The Word says. Mm -hmm. The Lord says. Yep. He hates hearing that. He's like, oh, man, I was trying to deceive him, but they're not getting tricked. It's what he likes to do, though, is deceive you and twist that Word. So we got to know what's true, amen? Yeah. You got to be in that Word.